So, welcome to our afternoon session on the first day, and uh, I'm very happy to introduce Frédéric Dubois to you now. Um, Frédéric is a professor for digital narratives with a, with a uh, focus on theory um, at the International Film School in Cologne. And among this, he works in multiple capacities as an author, producer, journalist, and scholar of digital media. And I'm quite sure that the most of you will know him from his, from his work that he did as a co-author and producer of the award-winning interactive stories Atawash, uh, Atawash um, and Field Trip, uh, which is uh, um, uh, made in cooperation with the Tagesspiegel, uh, I think, yeah. And, um, and also he's taken part in productions from the Canadian NFB and Arte, and among others he played a role in Fort McMoney. Um, that I'm also quite sure most of you will know. As a freelance journalist, Friedrich has traveled a number of countries telling stories of communities affected by resource and intensive industries such as fishing or mining. Um, and in recent years, he has further specialized his journalistic practice on internet and data related topics and works with, among others, as well, the Humboldt Institute for Society in Berlin. Um, his creative and journalistic experiences are complemented by the organization of coaching, training and teaching, for example in storytelling hackathons or the Netzdoku interactive documentary meetups, also in Berlin, if I'm correct. Um, and last but not least, he also does formal academic and theoretical work um, that in 2021 resulted in his uh, research creation PhD completed at the Film University Potsdam Babelsberg in 2021 with a thesis entitled Interactive Documentary Production and Societal Impact, the case of Field Trip. And in this you, you also have something to do with the, with the Sam Brandenburg, um, Brandenburg Center for Media Studies. And so we, we are on the same webpage. I, I didn't know this before. But, uh, yeah. So without uh, spoiling um, your talk, I am pleased that Friedrich is now uh, talking about one or the legacy of web-based documentation, um, what he defines as the sandbox mindset, and you already see the title. While according to Friedrich's thesis, tryouts and experimentation can be seen as a central characteristic of interactive documentaries, this could not prevail within the institutional settings in which the documentaries were produced. This is at least one part of things that you are talking about, and with this, I hand over to you. We're very happy to have you here. Honored. Thank you. Uh, I'm honored too. Uh, thanks a lot uh, uh, for having me here in uh, Lucille. Uh, also to Vanessa, Julius, uh, Florian, all of you, the team. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting. Um, yeah, I, I brought my uh, T-shirt, uh, which is uh, basically an experiment. Uh, so I'm just showing it to you. It's uh, uh, my kids made this T-shirt uh, for Christmas. Um, and uh, I was going to start with my t-shirt, uh, making a joke around it, but it's, it's relatively cold, so uh, <laughs> I, uh, I will, will stay this way. Um, this t-shirt is uh, maybe a failure for some, uh, the design of it. It's a labor of love for others, but it's definitely an uncertain outcome. Um, and uh, if you want to show it, if you want to see it, I can show it afterwards. <laughs> uh, it's a little bit like uh, iDocs, I guess, um, and I'll come to that. So, um, yeah, I'm uh, starting with a, a bit of a provocative question, uh, right? Uh, Web-based documenta documentaries legacy. Uh, and in that I have uh, three keywords, web-based, uh, documentary, legacy. Um, the, the reason I'm, I'm coming with the, uh, more of a provocative question that, uh, today is because, uh, well, I, I, I've been in this scene for like a number of years, like 15 years doing interactive documentaries and um, I've, uh, I've seen, uh, let's say, uh, the heyday of in IDOCs, I would say, uh, which I situate around 2013, or 11 years ago. Uh, I'd love to be challenged on that by those of you who are observing the scene. Um, and um, yes, I... Um, I'm interrogating myself all the time on uh, what is left of this, uh, this period of interactive docs. Um, what I mean by interac uh, interactive docs or web-based docs uh, are those practices, um, some of them shown by Yasmin and others uh, today already, um, that uh, use the web a lot, the, the browser-based uh, browser storytelling. 
which uh, for me is a formidable, uh, extraordinary way of telling stories. Uh, there are many affordances of the web, especially the web, what we call uh, in general language, the web 2.0, with this participatory aspect, with people uh, being able to, um, uh, to take part uh, from all walks of life. Um, and also, um, you know, enabling this user-generated content that um, nowadays has been diluted quite a lot with the, uh, the onslaught of the big platforms, the oligopoly of, uh, of major players, this is the platform economy. Um, but I also, um, I, I also refer to, to these web-based documentaries as, um, you know, part of a participatory culture and open culture. Um, I would say that in those years, 2013, 14, 15, it was really a period where uh, you could sense that um, a lot of people were in it for uh, the real deal of creation, uh, at least in, in um, uh, people getting around these, uh, these creative efforts um, within institutions such as the NFB, which is more of my experience with the studio in Montreal, uh, but also in other uh, setups uh, around the world. There, were, there was really like a a momentum uh, which definitely is, uh, is gone um, since around 2015, I would say. Now, this uh, doesn't come out of left field like this, uh, out of magic. Uh, IDOCs didn't come about. Uh, they were um, preceded by a lot of practices. Um, you know, William has already spoken to the photography, uh, the tradition in, in documentary as an innovative space where we always try to, to, to work with different um, media, with different takes, with different frames, uh, uh, trying to, to uh, re, um, yeah, reinvent um, uh, the storytelling. You can remember also, just to, to mention one example, uh, Michael Moore's documentaries made this very mainstream when IDOX uh, had, you know, around 2013, if you, you, you look back, um, there was already this, this, this buzz around these uh, documentaries, at least in the U.S. context, uh, but also in others. Uh, so documentary um, was, was already having kind of this revival, and then IDOX came along, and uh, a lot of creatives, um, many, by the way, people who are working in uh, photography or uh, other um, design jobs um, basically try to find ways um, to still make a living uh, because of their uh, livelihoods getting lost um, uh, to the digital sphere coming in. So a lot of people thought, okay, let's let's try the, the IDOX um, way of working. So um, web-based documentary, uh, the legacy aspect is, um, I'm insisting on the word legacy in terms of what is it that we can learn from IDOX uh, long term. Uh, I'm very interested in what type of knowledge is generated from our IDOX pra practice, but not just like short term for the next two, three years, but actually what is it that we can carry over uh, from uh, this practice that I, I see um, pretty much um, yeah, in the past. Uh, so my approach to this um, is, um, yeah, sorry for the slides, they're not like super well designed, but um, uh, and this is very much like an essay. It's, it's more an experimental uh, research that I'm, I'm trying to, to do, uh, provoking you also and trying to see what, what sticks, what com comes back. Uh, I'm looking at this from a historical perspective, so uh, drawing a lot on my, uh, uh, my own practice, uh, so it's uh, auto-ethnography based, uh, if, you, if you will. Um, and it's also um, a little bit of a retrospective um, that I'm, uh, I'm trying to work with. Um, and also, these are very early thoughts, so um, please um, um, be, be aware that they, uh, they're, they're not peer-reviewed or anything, so uh, I hope you are my, 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 uh, yeah, my reality check, my, my peer reviewers here in front of me. Um, so, uh, as I said, it's grounded in my own practice. Um, I've been an employee myself of the, the National Film Board for three years in Montreal. That was 2007, 8, 9, uh, was it even 10, maybe four years, uh, where I worked on the very first interactive docs. And the uh, one I worked on, which some of you might have seen, it's called GDP uh, on the economic crisis in Canada uh, and in the, in, the, in the US back then, 2000, 2008, 2009. Uh, we documented over a period of one year um, uh, the economic crisis in different sectors of the Canadian economy uh, and had filmmakers all across the country sending us material and we uh, did montage or 
film editing of these films and churn out one film per day over 256 days. Uh, so that was like a, a crazy <laughs> mode that the National Film Board was not accustomed to. Um, and um, yeah, that, that was my very first encounter with interactive docs. I, I worked on the, the web aspect of that interactive production, uh, which meant also, um, uh, you know, um, getting people participating. So we actually went the whole, um, did the whole sequence with uh, calling up mayors of, of small towns, uh, trying to understand how the economic crisis was hitting uh, at the local level, and we did that. <laughs> across Canada. Uh, I can tell you more about that. Um, it's, it's, a, it's a longer story um, and I will come back to it. Uh, and I did also independent uh, uh, IDOCs uh, after that. So uh, you mentioned some uh, field trip and Atavash. Uh, I will also build on that a bit. I'm also drawing on um, some events that I organized. For instance, in Berlin there was um, an event I organized with uh, Linda uh, Rath, uh, which was around VR documentaries. Uh, for journalism and uh, so v VR for journalism and documentaries um, and um, I did that for a period of three years so I'm uh, also taking a lot of insights from from these events and uh, finally uh, yeah uh, as mentioned I, I worked on a PhD which was a practice-based PhD um, and uh, where I looked at the, the notion of impact because that is also one of those uh, keywords, buzzwords, notions that is that are out there as much in practice as in theory. Uh, a lot of uh, uh, people looking at that term, uh, but I wanted to drill down a little bit. What does it mean exactly? What do you mean when you say impact? And uh, what is societal impact? What is individual impact? So I, I tried to get my head around that a little bit in my, in my thesis and used one of my uh, projects called Field Trip to illustrate, uh, but also to question the question of, of impact. Uh, so I looked at impact also in the production team. It was very much a production studies um, 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 yeah, perspective. Um, yeah, and I um, uh, did some other stuff uh, in festivals um, as an educator, uh, some more trainings, coachings of interactive projects. Uh, so just for you to um, get a sense of where I'm coming from. So my argument goes that um, web-based docs um, uh, played with the limits of different genres. We, we talked about that. If you're looking at uh, uh, projects like The Boat, I don't know, from the SBS um, Australian project, uh, they used um, graphic, uh, graphic novels, uh, graphic novel like print, classic print kind of codes, mix that with web affordances, or we have something like The Art of Folk, which is not even a documentary, but plays on uh, codes of documentary, but it uh, goes more into uh, fiction, so that's a production by Submarine Channel. These are the types of things that are playing at the edges and uh, really trying to, um, you know, find uh, uh, yeah, maybe multi-perspectives, but, but also playing with different media. Um, what uh, I see, uh, web-based documentaries are very situated. Um, what I mean by that is um, they um, they are situated in time, so they are very much associated to this open culture uh, phenomenon, like I mentioned. So one uh, idea would be like the, the, the Wikipedia kind of period, you know, when uh, this idea where everybody was uh, um, embracing uh, these types of projects like Wikipedia. Uh, so IDOCs are very much part of that open culture, let's say, um, phenomenon. And um, also this idea of um, everyone can take part in them. Uh, so co-constructing meaning, co-constructing knowledge. Uh, so that's the situatedness of IDOCs in time. In space, I would say, uh, IDOCs are also situated pretty much because they were mainly a phenomenon. Um, and I know I'm annoying you by talking about it in the past tense. Um, uh, a phenomenon that we could see in Western countries mainly, you know, the, the Canada, Canada, France, uh, but also the US, Netherlands, uh, Germany, Switzerland, um, there are many other countries, but uh, there, there was kind of this, this situatedness, I would say, uh, in regional terms. Not many IDOCs coming out of Africa, uh, Latin America a bit more, uh, but not that many, uh, and, uh, and uh, not that many coming out of Asia. Uh, so, um, they're also, um, um, th yeah, they're also situated in, um, uh, something which is a creative ecosystem, I would call it. Uh, so these web-based uh, docs have had an impact on certain institutions, um, P 
people and also uh, the documentary Jar. Um, I can talk more to the impact question if you're interested, but I, I'll leave it for that uh, now. Um, also, I would say that um, uh, the um, IDOCs have, a, have had a social significance um, and uh, the social significance comes from this sandbox mindset. So the one, the one element, I'm drawing one thing out uh, as, a, as an element that I think was, um, um, it, it is very valuable to protect and to keep carrying on, um, is that not only does this uh, sandbox mindset, uh, sandbox mindset, which I will describe in the next slide, um, not, it's, it's not only carrying the flame of open culture, which I think is getting lost these days, uh, but it's also um, very concrete and in very concrete and tangible ways you see um, how documentaries are made today. Um, you, um, you have a lot of um, people who worked on iDocs, for instance, um, who are now working on VR, AR, AI-driven uh, docs, so there's already this, this mix of people uh, carrying over. Um, and it is also um, uh, the, the sandbox mindset from IDOX is not just um, uh, not just a volatile thing. It's not just one um, insignificant uh, practice that we have, but actually is part of also. Uh, you see it in IDOX. You also see the game development. Uh, this idea that you can experiment much more uh, than what used to be the case in media production uh, in other sectors. So let me talk uh, a bit more about what I mean by the sandbox uh, mindset. So first of all, um, let's say a quick definition of it uh, would be something, and I'm drawing on uh, William H. Dutton, who is a, a scholar in the US, uh, who uh, has talked about a mindset, but a totally different one, the cybersecurity mindset. Uh, but I'm drawing on his uh, definition also uh, to um, make it stick with the sandbox mindset. The sandbox mindset is a, a set of attitudes, uh, beliefs, and values that encourage individuals and institutions to continually act in a manner that fosters experimentation. Um, and this is um, something um, uh, that can be detailed along, alongside a couple of characteristics. So um, what I see is that um, many of the institutions and also people um, you know, embracing or practicing the, the sandbox, sandbox mindset um, have, have been early adopters. Uh, so one example, uh, we mentioned the NFB. The NFB entered the field very early uh, in, and uh, not just entered the field uh, of interactive uh, documentary production, but they decided to actually switch the budgets, which um, is now mentioned today. They're uh, you know, taking a step back, true, uh, I think that also speaks to the fact that we should be talking about IDOX in the past to a certain extent. Uh, but um, they, they invested 20% of their budget back then, 2008, I think it was. Uh, and that made a lot of people unhappy at the NFB, let me tell you. Uh, the animation department, the documentary department, they were slashed uh, for enabling this digital turn. Um, but uh, they, uh, they did that to be uh, consequent with, you know, really uh, adopting new technologies, trying out new things. And in my view, that was a sign already that there was this kind of mindset, the sandbox mindset, this experimental mindset, that it was starting to, uh, to get established at the NFB. By the way, the NFB is like, uh, when I used to work there, it's like uh, next to a, a highway, a very ugly brown building, um, you know, and had a lot of um, a lot of old, uh, let's say, ways of working. Very bureaucratic, also, and it's almost surprising that such an institution with a budget of like sixty million dollars, it was back then. I don't know how it is today. Uh, actually, went for um, a big digital shift like that. Uh, so early adopting, uh, early adoption of technologies, and I mean by that really adoption, if you're an institution, uh, it really means a shift, uh, uh, embracing new methods, new tools, um, and um, also um, uh, having what I call the, the, the happy camper attitude, you know, being, yes, uh, critical about technology, uh, but as, to a certain extent just embracing technologies uh, mainly, uh, new technologies, so today's context would be, uh, you know, machine learning uh, tools and so on. Um, and uh, you have that very much, um, this, this spirit um, in, um, yeah, in those, in those early days. Uh, also, um, uh, risk-taking uh, was part of the, 
the DNA. So it was very much um, about, um, and let me maybe jump to the, the next slide. Uh, so it was, it was very much about making mistakes failing. So the GDP project I mentioned before, uh, that uh, looks like that. Um, the GDP project was a big fail. Okay, so it's $900,000 Canadian that was invested in that production. Uh, and uh, over a period of a year and a half, we, we worked on it. Uh, there were six people hired to work on it. Uh, but it's a big fail in terms of uh, the public. It was not a project that was widely uh, visited. It was the early days of the participatory internet. Uh, um, you know, YouTube uh, was uh, was starting, um, and we uh, we we really invested so much to get people to participate, but people didn't really uh, come on board. And one of the reasons for that is that the story we were telling. Uh, it's a pretty basic mistake. Uh, wasn't appealing, right? So talking about the <laughs> talking about the economic crisis to a nation that is struggling with the economic crisis uh, was, in the end, a pretty basic uh, challenge. Um, and so uh, that is uh, that also speaks to the fact that it was taking a risk. You know, okay, we'll try it. They believed in still talking about the tough topic uh, and uh, making a lot of mistakes in the, in the production. Uh, and uh, at the end failing. So that's what I mean by risk taking, really uh, also investing and then um, you know, getting, uh, getting bad results. Um, in the, the sandbox mind mindset also at the institutional level means that you're in it for the long haul. So as you can see, if the NFB is dropping out now with interactive productions, uh, it's, it's quite a long period. 2008 uh, till now, uh, they've really invested quite consequential means. Um, but uh, at the same time, um, the news that came out two two weeks ago is actually old news in the sense that they already pulled the plug quite a while back uh, by uh, not investing as much in interactive productions, in not archiving uh, many of the interactive productions they had. Uh, and also being um, struggling with the fact that it's a federal institution uh, where you have uh, good working conditions and one of the negative aspects of that is that people get pensions and you need the, the, the pension uh, takes much more room uh, in the, the budget uh, than, uh, than actual production. Uh, so it, it, the production uh, budget gets lower and lower and lower uh, uh, each year. Um, and uh, so uh, just, just um, uh, yeah, just to mention that um, these uh, being in the in there for the long haul um, is is still also uh, an aspect of, of risk taking. Um, it also means that um, if you're looking at institutions more in the commercial end or in the industry, uh, it would mean um, going into IDOT production without expecting a return on investment. So you're actually investing in something, uh, and you know you will you might fail. Um, many of the mistakes that we saw. Um, were that, um, for instance, on a technical level, Flash was unplugged, right? I mean, Flash is not usable anymore, uh, but there was so much heavy investment in this Flash technology uh, without really uh, this long-term perspective. So that's, that's also, that was also, at a certain point, risk-taking, uh, but, um, yeah, that's, um, uh, th yeah, so, so that's, that's one point I wanted to make on risk-taking. I don't know how much time do I still have. Uh, Around 10 minutes? 10 minutes? Okay, thank you. Um, the, um, the other aspect I want to mention is that, uh, yeah, with, with, um, with experimentation, being experimentation happy at the, at the institutional level, and I don't know if that speaks to certain educational contexts, if you're at a university or in, uh, in, a, in a production company, uh, it means really uh, inverting uh, certain um, workflows. Um, like I mentioned with the GDP project, you know, producing a film per day is not really the, the usual speed. Uh, so you have to reinvent the production pipelines. There's a lot of, um, uh, yeah, things happening um, uh, uh, at the production level. Uh, the, the BBC R&D, for instance, uh, research and development small unit at the BBC, is also um, at the same time reinventing how to, to produce uh, tools for BBC's uh, web presence, uh, so web plugins and so on. Uh, they've actually also associated on a number of IDOCs, um, and um, so so those those are those were the times uh, where you know a lot of institutions were um, 
also um, yeah, experimentation happy. This all comes, um, you know, when when the, the institutions are, are adopting this this mindset, the sandbox mindset, they are adopting it with a certain vision, uh, and I would argue that uh, the. Um, the, in, in terms of the documentary productions, um, institutions like the NFB have this very long tradition of documentary, and so we're able to also uh, pull it off with, with the sandbox mindset to to uh, enable this this um, uh, yeah the, the, this box with with stand in it, so ple people playing around with with web projects because they knew where they were coming from, because they had uh, this history and they had a vision where they wanted to go. Uh, so they, uh, that's a, an institution where I think um, you know a lot of things were were already set. So when we talk about the sandbox uh, mindset, it's not just like people uh, starting new projects and ex experimenting freely. Often the setup is very um, uh, is very planned out. Um, I saw that also with Doc Leipzig working with them. Uh, they uh, they've uh, had the net lab and, and certain hackathons. Uh, but again, people participating in those um, uh, sandbox offerings um, could could find a way to participate because uh, the setup was uh, within an institution that really had a tradition already on documentary. Um, let me uh, move on to um, yeah the um, the sandbox mindset at the educational level. I just want to say a few uh, words, and I, I think. Uh, Martin will, will speak a bit more uh, on research creation, uh, so I won't get into that too much. Um, and um, but uh, but in terms of um, sandboxing, um, at the at the IFS at the film school where I'm at right now uh, in Cologne. Uh, so some some of you mentioned that it was very tough in the um, university setting uh, to actually get things going and uh, experimenting. Um, and uh, it's, it's certainly true for certain contexts, but for, for, for us at least, the way we're going about it is that we're always trying to uh, partner with organizations outside uh, who already have this sandbox mindset. So I'm insisting on that. Uh, we co uh, collaborate with um, Naturkunde Museum Berlin, that's the Natural History Museum in Berlin. Uh, they already have a lab. They already did like their, it's also an institution that's been around for a long time. It's more a research institution than a museum actually. Um, and they, um, yeah, they set up like a, this lab uh, within their museum uh, setting, uh, and uh, they're associating uh, with um, educational, um, you know, institutions uh, to um, do very concrete um, uh, projects. So I have here um, just a um, an image of uh, the blog that our students are writing, uh, which is more of a production journal. Uh, but uh, here. Um, you, what you see is, uh, uh, you know, a collaboration we did with Freies Werkstatt Theater, which is a theater group uh, in uh, Cologne, and they also have this very, very much this ex uh, experimental praxis, uh, very established. They know how to work with with actors. They they open these spaces for people to participate, uh, and so this is our way, maybe our uh, attempt uh, to connect. Uh, or to, to protect this uh, creative space and to, to permit some experimentation. Uh, so um, we, um, yeah, in, in, in this context, uh, our students uh, work on web XR creations. So, uh, you know, web, uh, multi-dimensional web uh, projects, um, some of them documentary, um, but um, they, they did these projects based on a theater play. So that the, the material was already there and uh, they, they, they had more uh, of, of uh, thinking and doing uh, around the idea of you know, expanding theater into another space on, on the web uh, in this case. Uh, so that worked very well in terms of uh, experimental approach because it, um, yeah, we, we had the chance to, to collaborate with an institution that already had this in, in their DNA. So the same happened with the Natural History Museum where we associated to, with, with VR uh, tools, um, so Unity and, and, uh, all, and the like. Uh, we dug into uh, the archives of the museum. They have bugs and insects, uh, and millions uh, of them. Uh, and so we, uh, we worked with that to uh, tell stories. Um, uh, Using VR technology. Okay, so just another example of how that uh, worked uh, relatively well because the people in the Natural History Museum and the theater 
they knew how to protect that space, that creative moment. Uh, in this case, it was more in the form of a hackathon. Uh, but you, it's it's not a given. Many institutions don't have this reflex, and so uh, it's often good to to work from from something. Um, yeah. What else did I want to insist on here? So uh, there's yeah. There's always um, so, so again. I'm coming back to the the sandboxing aspect. Uh, so enabling and protecting the sandbox mindset means also that you need a method, right? Um, and uh, you need um, you need a vision and a method of how to how to go about it. Um, the visual narrative uh, lab in uh, the Woods Film School, where where I was for for a while, uh, they also um, are about creating iDocs. So old school iDocs, like the way I was talking before, uh, they're doing that right now, um, and uh, they're. They really have a method on, on a certain logic, um, uh, how to evaluate technology. So they're looking at different web technologies. They uh, they, they know how to work with mentors. Um, they uh, work uh, um, along uh, with agile uh, uh, production methods, uh, and they document their process a lot. Uh, so um, they uh, they really they really follow this this method and uh, uh, still enable. Um, the, the risk taking and uh, the, the yeah they, because they create this framework around the sandbox it actually really uh, uh, works for uh, people participating in it um, yes I think I will um, jump because I, I might be short on time three um, <laughs> yeah so um, it's easier done than uh, said than done. Um, the the adoption of the, the mindset is um, is something that is dynamic in institutions uh, in, in groups that we work with. Uh, so you really need to um, uh, also talk about uh, the the, uh, the sandbox mind, uh, sandbox mindset. Uh, so adoption is, is really key. But once it's adopted. Uh, it's uh, it's always uh, it's a dynamic process, and you need to always uh, re uh, rediscuss what the box is of your sandbox. Like how much experimentation can you allow, uh, and you need to level that a lot. Uh, uh, I've seen I've had this discussion uh, very often in projects with funders uh, because funders, uh, at least in the German context, really have a hard time understanding uh, you know kind of pr projects like IDOCs because they're really. Uh, at the crossroads of different, um, you know, uh, genres. Let's say film and uh, software development. So often it doesn't fit the box, and um, so that's where I come with my sandbox idea uh, to say, <laughs> let us let us play a little bit with that. And uh, um, but it's true, like Yasmin was saying in her presentation, the funding aspect is is uh, is definitely something that is killing uh, slowly uh, this medium uh, because we don't get. Um, um, you know, funding that really permits a lot of exploration or experimentation. Um, the uh, yeah, so so just to bring it back to the personal level, uh, maybe a couple of points. So you, the this the sandbox mind, sandbox mindset um, is really a question of belief, attitude, and practice. Okay, uh, everybody has this experimental mindset in, in, in themselves. Like my T-shirt here uh, speaks to it. Uh, we all have this, um, you know, the, the experimental aspect. Uh, but um, what is often lacking uh, is, uh, you know, the the ethics, the framework, this box that we're creating. Uh, we need to get some orientation on how to create it. I'm a big fan, personally, of uh, work that was done by Engage Media, uh, a group in uh, Australia and uh, that region. Um, uh, more more specifically, researcher Tanya Notley. Uh, with media activist Sam Gregory, maybe some of you know know them from nonprofit Witness, and also Andrew Loventhal from from Engage Media. In 2015, they uh, they talked about the Impact Pathways Framework, uh, which is very much like a framework, an ethical framework when you're doing documentary and new forms of documentary. Uh, so they're they're really taking a long haul view, uh, also in making documentaries. So they have this uh, ethical orientation. Uh, for um, for you to um, yeah to produce your 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 IDOC. Um, and um, another notion that I I'm, I'm really fond of is the, the notion of critical consciousness. I think Yasmin, you have something similar, critical awareness. 
uh, I'm, I'm drawing on, uh, on Paulo Freire uh, from uh, Brazil, who uh, came up with this concept of uh, critical consciousness and the uh, the idea is to be conscious about the design, the dif different ways of, of going about it. So, at a personal level, um, if you if you're in a position to take it on to adopt uh, this kind of critical view uh, and um, also an ethical uh, way of working, uh, then experimentation is, uh, is is definitely something that uh, that can be uh, done quite uh, effectively. Um, yes, and. Um, Maybe a last uh, word from my side. Uh, William uh, talked in the, in the keynote a bit uh, earlier about uh, the pas de deux between the author uh, and the user. And uh, in production terms, at least, I would rather say that um, you know it's a, it's a pas de mille. Uh, so we're, we're you know we're we're in contact with a lot of people, different people, and trying to experiment uh, with with a lot of people. So I don't know if the pas de deux is. Is still working today <laughs> uh, because it's dancing with quite a lot of people. Um, so that's that's also uh, something that is um, yeah to, to keep in mind when you're designing uh, IDOC. Um, yeah, I had I, yeah I had slides on my own projects, but I think uh, that's that's rather boring at this stage. Um, yeah, the balancing act influence yeah. Um, I'll, I'll leave it at that, just say that in conclusion, the sandbox mindset is the, the fuel of IDOX. This is what I, I, I think, and uh, uh, new forms of media creation today still, uh, but they're also contributing to the obsolescence of modern media. So since we're always in this sandbox mindset or media innovations mindset, uh, we're always trying to look for new technologies also, new ways of doing stuff, and we're, we're killing ourselves, you know, at the same time. So that's maybe just the last thought. Um, so. Thank you.